Good morning, church. Those among us who are liturgically minded would have known that last Sunday began the season of Advent. Advent is from the Latin Adventus. It means coming. It is during this season of the year that we Christians remember, recall, and sometimes reenact the first coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is also a time in which we look forward with anticipation to the second coming of Christ, His promised return. There's also a third coming of Jesus. It doesn't get as much press. It isn't as, as often spoken of, but it's just as, uh, as important in some ways, and that is the coming of Christ into our lives presently. Because He has already come in humility as a Savior, and because He promises to come in power as a judge. This in-between time, in between the comings of Christ, is the exact and only opportunity that people have to hear the gospel and to be saved. Are you saved today? Do you know that you are saved? Have you heard the good news of Jesus, that the very Son of God came to this earth in the form of a man, born as a baby, lived sinlessly among us, perfectly upheld, followed, and fulfilled the law, did what you and I cannot do, lived sinlessly, and thus never deserved the consequence of death, but nonetheless decided to die upon a cross of crucifixion in our stead as our substitute bore the penalty of our transgression in His own body, shed His own blood, and died for you and for me. He was killed, He was buried, and three days later He rose again triumphant, having defeated death, now offering everlasting life to any and all who would reach out to Him and receive Him. This third coming, the coming of Jesus into lives presently. We also think of this at the time of Advent. We continue our celebration of Advent today with the lighting of the Advent candle. We first light the candle of hope. Now, the imagery of candle lighting is significant, but it's kind of lost a little bit when we light a candle in the daytime. The purpose of the candle is to emit light. Or another way to say that is to dispel the darkness. Darkness in the Scripture conveys the ideas of ignorance, of spiritual blindness, of despair, corruption, death, hopelessness. Light conveys the ideas of revelation, moral purity, life, and hope. So we've lit the candle of hope. This hope is not wishful thinking with some degree of uncertainty like, I hope this snow melts that we got last night, and it will if the temperature rises, and it won't if it doesn't. Biblical hope is much more than wishful thinking. Biblical hope is a confident expectation that God is true to His Word, that God will fulfill all that He has promised. The second candle we light is a candle of peace. Peace is not just the absence of conflict. But peace is the calm assurance that we can endure anything when we trust in God and be settled. By faith, we live in peace as children of God as we wait for a new heaven and a new earth, an existence without evil, where God governs everything, where love prevails, and where justice reigns. Let's pray. Father, we believe even now you are at work in our world and that all that you have promised will indeed come to pass. We ask that you might reignite in us a confidence.
confident hope. And fill us with a peace that surpasses understanding as we put our trust in You. Amen.